Hi friends. I've been wanting to make this video for a while. All day I've been waiting to do this and for whatever reason the church bells have been ringing at the top of every hour for like the past eight minutes. Like we want to hear eight minutes of church bell songs. I don't. So I'm like, well, I guess I'm going to be making these videos while the church bells are ringing. FYI. I'm Monique, the work from home mogul. And if you're new to my channel, I make videos about business tips, owning a business, working from home, different apps to make money from, including Poshmark. But today I'm going to talk about promotional modeling. And today's special guest is Cluelessa. Okay, I think I get it. I made a overview video about promo modeling and brand ambassador, but I have been a promotional model for 15 years, and today I am going to go more into depth about on-premise promotions. Stay tuned. I was introduced to promotional modeling in 2007, probably from a Craigslist ad or something. And I just thought that it was a way to go do an event, promote something for a few hours, which I was interested in. Over the years, I've taken these random gigs whenever it has accommodated me and it has definitely allowed me to meet a ton of people get a ton of experience and skills and things that have helped me in my own business and also just being able to save the money to use it towards my business. Anyone with a smile and good pictures can do these jobs. They are all over the place. Now, a lot of them are liquor based, but there's also so many food, beverage, technology, product, retail, companies that want to get their brand exposed and they're going to pay people that can do that well. On-premise promotions are the fun ones. That's when you get to go into a bar lounge for a couple of hours or you're at an event, activation, sporting, game, festival, something super cool for several hours, which can be fun but also can be really draining. These are the ones that people always want to do. Off-premise is when you are actually in the liquor store, you're in the Costco, you're in a brick and mortar for three hours with a table display sampling the product. This is what people don't want to do. It's usually because you have to bring your own table. Now, on-premise can be anywhere from $25 to $40 an hour but you can be on your feet for up to 12 hours. Off premise is always two or three hours. It is super easy. You barely have to do anything and it's typically $30 an hour. You just have to have a table. And this is where people just get discouraged. Like, oh my God, I have to bring a table to a store. How am I gonna do it? Some places already have a table there or there are plenty of portable tables around you don't have to be there all day. It's usually going to be on a weekend for three hours or a Thursday or Friday night. And that is it. Any business that you own, you could work this around it. So first you might be thinking, well, how do I get these jobs? Well, you're gonna have to look at my last video where I actually listed out a whole bunch of sites cause I'm not really gonna do that again. Anytime that you've seen these things happening, you know, you could talk to the people that are doing them and find out what company they're in. What you need to have is two good pictures, one of your face, one of your full body, both smiling, in my opinion. You're going to need a resume, and your resume could be any profession, any experience you have where you were smiling at people or talking to customers. Anything like that will do. And you gotta be really organized, applying to things when you know you can go, so that when you're accepted, you go. First of all, canceling on the last minute, you'll never get the job again. If they book you and you're like, oh crap, I already have something to do, that doesn't look so great either. 
organization, photos, resume to get the job. Unfortunately, an email for them telling you you're booked is the only thing you have and it's up to you to actually be organized enough to go to do the job. The email will have the brand and maybe some history about it or they'll put you on a conference call to learn a little bit about it. It'll tell you your call time, when to go and set up, where you're going. It's usually a bottle of or two provided to you. They'll tell you, is it gonna be in the store for pickup? Do you have to buy it yourself and then get reimbursed for it? Will they mail you a credit card that you can actually just swipe to buy it? All of these things are options and they're things that you're gonna need to know. If it is being provided to you at the store, you need the name of the person who ordered it or an order number. Most of the times being delayed on starting this is because you don't know where the bottle is or even what name of the bottle is or what you're actually sampling. If you are required to call the store and make sure that they have the product or that they actually have the inventory to sell, do that because why sample it if nobody can buy it? In the email will also be paperwork on how you can actually get paid. So you'll fill out a 1099 form or whatever. When you make 600 bucks or over, that's when you need to report it on your taxes. And you also wanna know when you get paid and how. Some of it is an instant Venmo, Cash App, Zelle, Transport, we love those. Some of them, it's like an e-check or they'll direct deposit and it could take two or three weeks because it's an actual payroll where they do it you know, every other Friday. You wanna know that if it doesn't say in the email, ask and then make sure that you have this written down or in a calendar so you know if you didn't get paid, who to contact so that you do get paid. These are all different agencies that do this. It can get confusing to know, okay, which person did I work for and when are they paying me? If they slip through the cracks and you don't remember, they're not gonna hunt you down to pay you, so you are the one that needs to know when you're getting reimbursed if they're paying for your parking or transportation or cups or ice, anything that you need to pay out of pocket. If this is a liquor promotion, go ahead and ID anyone that looks under 40 just so you know you don't go to jail or whatever. Have a nice table display. Take lots of pictures of you, the table if it looks nice, other people holding samples, I like to take a lot of pictures of a lot of different angles, especially if people sampling it allow me to take pictures. I will take it from the waist up without the brand in it because you never know when you're gonna need pictures like these for another promotion when you don't have enough people sampling. The table they want you to have is a card table, usually a four foot card table, thigh, hip height, however, some people don't want to be carrying a table around with them. Some people don't have space in their car for like a four or six foot table. I mean, there's plenty of Amazon garage sales where there's cheap tables that you could get, but some of these liquor stores are really small. I'm not bringing a huge ass table. I have a TV tray table. It is a good height. It's not really a good length with a nice tablecloth and with stacks of whatever you can find in the store, like cases of High Noon or Truly or White Claw, I've been able to make the table look longer. And there's ways to do this, where half of the table is in the picture and no one really needs to know how small this table is. Honestly, it's about the job of sampling the product, not about wheeling this huge ass table around. Some of these apps where they're having you check in and check out of the promotion are pretty high tech, they're geolocated. Otherwise, it's just an email after the event with pictures and saying how many people you sampled and how many bottles were sold. And I would say, besides the whole app thing in 15 years, basically nothing has changed. You have people sample it. You ask them, would you like to take one home today? When you actually ask the question, you'll get an answer. And if they like it, you'll get sales. 
Now sales don't usually matter. If you're impressive with the sales, they'll want you back. It actually shows that you did something. Even if you showed up late or packed up early, if you had some sales in there and a lot of good pictures, you're good. Unless you're getting secret shop, no one really knows that you're there. So the way that they know you did a good job is by having sales and good pictures. You never know who you're going to meet when you are smiling and doing a good job. This could lead to all sorts of opportunities, experiences, you know, over the last 15 years, I mean, there might have been 10 years in there when I didn't do any promotions at all. Or, or maybe one for the whole year. I made some great friendships. Got to go into some really cool places I would have never seen. Events and concerts. All types of stuff. There's opportunities to travel, be a tour manager, and go do things you would have never thought that just sampling things in front of a card table would allow you to do. All right, now let's hear from our special guest, Cluelessa. Okay, so let me get this straight. You're serving them, but you have to like beg them for you to serve them. So you're like a panhandling butler, basically. Desperate. Well, Cluelessa, this job certainly is not for everyone. You do need to stand there and be of service to people and be knowledgeable about whatever product that you are sampling. I mean, $30 an hour. Can I just like pay someone 10 and keep the other 20? That's a really interesting thought. I would recommend this for people that are nice or that can at least put on some facade of interest. I mean, what kind of model is like bringing around a table? Are you like walking the runway while carrying a table? Like what kind of model is like doing heavy lifting like that? Yeah, whoever's in the store will maybe take a couple of pictures of you, but you're pretty much taking pictures of the table of the bottles on the shelf, knowing the cost, people sampling it, maybe pictures of them, but you're not doing like a runway show or anything. That's not the kind of modeling this is. I don't see the appeal of standing around in one spot and modeling alcohol samples. Like, what are we doing? Whatever is left over, you do get to keep. I mean, if you like it, it's cool. You get to have it and take it home with you or bring it and share it with friends, whatever you'd like to do. I thought I got it, but I don't think I get it. All right, Cluelessa, we're out of time, but thank you for your feedback. Thank you, Work From Home Bodies. If you did get this far, please like this video. And if you want more of this type of stuff, let me know in the comments. You can let me know by subscribing, by sharing with a friend. That's an indicator that this is worth it for you and would be worth it for me to keep doing. See you next time. Bye. Why sample it if nobody can buy it? <laughs>